मैं अपने नापाक खून से आपके हाथ नहीं रंगने दूंगी she wasn't really used to interacting with um, you know other people her age so there was a lot that she had to kind of learn at like the age of 16 17 when she got into college whether it was learning the language or learning pop culture that you know everyone was talking about at the time to um, just how to deal with you know um, other people a director by the name of BR Ishara who spotted her in Ahmedabad while he was shooting there um he liked what she looked like and uh, called her over for a screen test and uh, made her an offer right there and then and she was like oh i'm not going to accept the offer until i know what the story is you couldn't take her take your eyes off her uh, when she was on screen there was just something about her that made you want to see more of her her character anita had like you know economic and social uh, autonomy she she wasn't coy about sleeping with somebody without marriage she was okay with having a child out of wedlock she made her own money she was she didn't depend on amitabh's character for money um and those are the kind of things that we kind of see now that kind of um you know um, autonomy that that the uh, female characters have <laughs> किसी मैगजीन या न्यूज़पेपर के लिए मेरा इंटरव्यू लेने आए हैं
the one thing that hasn't changed from then to now is how the media kind of deals with mental health issues. Um, at the time that Parveen was going through her illness um, and also at times very, very publicly, um, you know, they called her mad. They, you know, they wrote about, um, they said she'd gone off her rockers. They, you know, they were just very, very insensitive to um, what was going on with her. When she quit the industry, it was the second time. She'd done that once in 77 when she left with Kabir. Um, so directors and producers at the time knew that she could be a flight risk. And yet they wanted to work with her because she was a really, really professional artist. She was somebody who remembered her dialogues uh, really well. She, she was completely no fast, even if it meant that she worked through her lunch break. One of the saddest parts of Parveen's life was the fact that she didn't have a support system. Um, and the, the few people who did really care about her, she kept driving them away. They, they didn't know how to deal with what they thought were very wild accusations. Also, remember, there was very little awareness of mental illness at the time. You know, people didn't talk about it openly. Uh, people didn't get the treatment that they, that they needed. Like when I started researching for the book, um, everyone would tell me, she's like, oh, um, you know, she drank, she smoked, she did drugs, she had a promiscuous life, which is why, like, you know, she went, she, like, she went mad. And when I started researching, I realized that she never did drugs. She barely ever drank. She was a social drinker. Um, and... Um, Yes, she was a smoker. She was like a chain smoker pretty much until the end of her life. And she wasn't promiscuous. Like she had very, very steady relationships. What was unfortunate was the fact that eventually the only aspect of her life that they kind of focused completely on was the scandalous bit. They did not look at her as anything beyond her scandals. Um, and that's, those are the impressions then that, you know, fans are left with. <laughs> 